Yeah, this presentation is uh, about a ship point intercomparison of passive microwave and infrared radiometers, which was carried out in spring 2021. And this was a joint effort between the Danish Meteorological Institute and the Danish Technical University that collaborated under the ESA funded fiducial reference measurements uh, for SST. Um, project, which main purpose is the validation of satellite SSD products to fiducial reference measurement standards. And this part of the project had a motivation to advance in the understanding of passive microwave and infrared simultaneous observations in preparation for the upcoming Copernicus imaging um, microwave radiometer. Uh, here we present the intercomparison of this first shipborne campaign using both infrared and microwave instruments near the sea surface, um, in this way minimizing the atmospheric impact. And uh, we had um, uh, two almost identical ISARs uh, or infrared instruments and um, uh, two microwave radiometers named Emirate in, in two channels. Um, the first ones, the ISARs, have been designed and developed to be used on shipborne platforms for SST fiducial reference measurements, and they have been successfully used in SST validation for several years. Whereas the, the Emirates were specifically refurbished and upgraded for this particular experiment. Um, on the left side, we see the Norona ferry uh, used as a platform which travels uh, between Denmark and Iceland on a weekly basis, except in winter, and in which the ISAR is regularly deployed. Uh, on the right side, um, uh, we can see the setting um, with the two ISARs installed side by side, the Emirates, um, and here we can see the horn antennas of the microwave instrument. Um, that at the moment of the picture were oriented to the sky. Um, the metal box contained the electronics of the, of the microwave instrument. So this campaign lasted for seven days, covering uh, around 4,850 kilometers. It parted from the north of Denmark, uh, and then it had a stopover in the Faroe Islands and to continue to, uh, the, to Iceland. Um, the background figure uh, shows the weekly average incidence temperature of time from SLSTR level 3, um, which remained in between uh, 12 to 16 degrees uh, from Denmark to Faroe Islands, but then decreased as low as 5 degrees when, reaching, uh, when approaching Iceland. The weather conditions varied from clear sky to heavy rain. Um, the sea surface was reported to have mild roughness conditions. And here we used uh, reanalysis data from ERO5 and the uh, uh, DMI HICOM ocean model um, for the characterization and also for further data analysis. And we can see here in gray, the gray bands show the ports, oops, the ports in which it, when the ship was moored and the rain events. Um, uh, this is a plot of the raw data and in dark colors the final matchup data set for the analysis. On the top panel uh, we see the SST data from the infrared instrument and the second ISAR um, being of an older generation uh, failed during the deployment so unfortunately the data had to be discarded. Uh, the ISARs are designed to close off the mechanism in case of rain uh, when it is detected uh, to protect the instrument, so whenever there was rain, uh, there are gaps of the infrared data. The lower two panels show the brightness temperature of the two uh, microwave channels, and we see C band H polarization had to be discarded because it had a noisy signal that persisted for most of the campaign. And um, then the matchup dataset was uh, 
divided into uh, moving and poor conditions and we analyze temporal and and um, spatial variability of the four data sets um, and here we can see uh, for example that the x band h polarization presents a higher variability compared to the rest of the instruments um, and in contrast to the ISAR to the infrared for, for example that remain quite stable for both uh, collection conditions. Subsequently we analyzed the sensitivity of the brightness temperature of each microwave channel using a forward model to understand the impact of the geophysical influences um, and here we can um, partly explain the variability of the X band H polarization because it's highly affected by mild changes in the input parameters, um, particularly um, the, the top two, uh, which is uh, wind speed and the incidence angles, uh, angle. Yes. Uh, meanwhile, all the parameters assessed uh, had a negligible effect. So for example, the angle, the relative angle of the ship with respect to the wind and um, the sea surface salinity. <coughs> um, then a linear regression was applied using the infrared data as independent variable and this is the final expression which was a result of uh, several iterations and this is a function of the three channels used, uh, three brightness temperature uh, channels and the wind speed um, plus the infrared error of the instruments and the geophysical parameters. Um, the following figure shows the relationship between the observed and retrieved SST, observed being the uh, infrared and retrieved um, the microwave SST. And uh, here in the, on the right we can see that a long period of mooring in Iceland um, oof, uh, shows a very good correlation, uh, that's, those are the the lowest temperatures and then in the slightly warmer waters of Torshavn and uh, in the Faroe Islands it is not so well correlated but it is interesting that it works quite well for cold waters. Um, the bias then was analyzed by the Ignite and here we see that uh, well the Microwave SSD is a measure of the subskin and the infrared is the skin uh, temperature. So it is interesting that the mean difference shows that in moving conditions uh, the subskin is warmer than the skin during the day and colder during the night. But we also wanted to analyze how much of this uh, is the error and so we quantified um, the magnitude of the propagated error in the retrieved SSD. Uh, giving the error from the different um, parameters used. And for this purpose we assume that the budget uncertainty of the SST retrieval will be the sum of the instruments, of the Emirate instruments, uh, plus the, um, the wind speed and sea surface salinity and uh, uh, the incidence angle and the relative angle of the ship with respect to the wind. And we obtain an uncertainty of 0 0.97 uh, Kelvin for the data collected while the ship was moving and 0 0.34 for steady conditions. And with this uh, in mind, uh, we, um, uh, with the constraints that we had with the data set obtained, we can point to specific measures to improve future shipborne or airborne intercomparison campaigns and we firstly conclude that the instrument design uh, needs to do or needs to better address noise sensitivity and more robust hardware uh, that is suitable for outdoor conditions and um, cable manipulation because we could observe changes in the signal when cables were manipulated and data had to be filtered. Um, secondly we consider that um, uh, additional instrumentation needs to be installed uh, along with the microwave instruments, um, particularly for uh, a better measure of the wind speed and the changes of the incidence angle uh, when the microwave is sampling. 
because we only had a, a measure of the infrared sampling uh, changing the incidence angle. And lastly, after one week of measurements, we only had a matchup of 752 data points, um, and we should aim for a larger matchup data set that allows uh, a more statistically significant analysis. And here we have some uh, references. And this work, the entire analysis is in process of publication, so it will hopefully be available for the public soon.